ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ಧೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾರ್ಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರ ಮುನಿಂ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂಧೀಭಕ್ತಿಗುಣಾರ್ಣವಂತ್ಯಮಚ್ಯುತಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್
Makaram Biravitanda Maksharama Jnana Vatiyama Irukum. So it is also derived on basis of the two roots, Manu Avabodhani and Managnyani or something like that, which we explained in the previous class. Further, there, is, there are a few issues that are explained by Swami Manavana Mamani. <coughs> Which says, Vijnana Atma Purusha Vijnata Ramare Kena Vijani Yat Yen Girapadiye Jnana Swarupa Numai Jnana Gunaka Numai Irikira Atma Vichulu Hiradi in Jay. So, this, all these things were explained in the earlier class. So, I will not repeat it. <coughs> then the 67th Sutra is taken. Ididan Samashtiva Chakam. Kil chunna sheshatum, sadharana, sarvasadhar, namahe ale, trividhat mavergatim, idilesh, or levain to hay ale, or richihira, idan samashtiva, the kamine, about the ipedi, atmava, atmava, the kamane, makarandan, atma samashtiva, the kamine. So, what is being mentioned here is, so there is the concept of Samashti and Vyashti in the Indian philosophical systems. So Samashti means what we call, a, to put it in a very crude manner, what we call as bulk. Vyashti means individual. So suppose I, I will give an example. <laughs> Suppose I had to, you have a pack of biscuits. In the pack of biscuits, there are, say in one pack of biscuits, there might be 10, 10 pieces of biscuits. Suppose, suppose I want to prepare one biscuit at home. Then what do I do? I go through some process and all and prepare a biscuit. So that is Vyashti Srishti. Or you do it in individually. You may, you, may, uh, you may put some flour and other things and uh, bake one piece of biscuit in an oven that is at home. But when it is prepared in a factory, millions of pieces of biscuits are prepared. <laughs> are manufactured within a period of one or two hours. That is one way of explaining it. So Samashti means bulk, Vyashti means individual. That is only one way of explaining. I am not saying this is how it applies when we talk about Vyashti Srishti and Samashti Srishti. Similarly, when we talk about Vyashti Srishti and Samashti Srishti, Samashti Srishti means the Overall tattva or the overall inherent nature, for example, water or earth or whatever it is. When it is produced in a mass manner, then it is known as samashti srishti. Whereas if it is produced individually in small quantities, it is known as vishti srishti. In this context, when you say makara denotes the atma, so does it denote any one Atma or Atma in general? When this question is raised, then it, he says, Samashtiva Chakam. It refers to all the individual souls in general. What do you mean by all the individual souls? The meaning is, the souls are categorized into three categories. They are divided into three categories. Namely, Baddha, bonded souls. Mukta means those who have, who were bonded earlier but have attained liberation or moksha. That is why they are known as Mukta, liberated souls. When you say liberated, it implies that earlier they were not liberated. That means earlier they were bonded, under bondage like we are in this state now. But by the grace of God, they have become liberated. 
and one more class of jivatmas who are known as nitya muktas eternally liberated which means they never they have never had any relationship or anything to do with the material world nor do they have anything nor will they have to do anything with the material world in future also so they do not have any anything to do with this material world in the past present and they shall not have anything to do with the material world in future also they are known as nitya muktas which means which refers to ananta garuda vishaksena adaya ananta garuda vishaksena and others so they are known as nitya muktas so this ma makara refers to the jivatma which essentially means it refers to all types of jivatma so that they are buddhas bonded souls or liberated souls or eternally liberated souls all three are <coughs> deemed to have mentioned to have been mentioned by the word ma so therefore it is said idanam samashti vachakam then jat ke kavachanam then the question is raised there is a concept of what is known as jat ke kavachanam in sanskrit language and literature ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ singular dual and plural so if it is if you have to denote an object that is one in number you have to have you have to say singular if it is two you have what is known as dvivachana or dual they take this exists only in sanskrit it does not exist in any other language as far as i know i don't know whether it exists in greek and latin or not but dual number does not exist in any indian language nor any foreign language like indian english etc that much i am sure but whether it exists in some classical language like greek or latin i am not sure so you have to denote an object that is one in number you use singular number in sanskrit you have dual to denote two and in then for the for some number some object which is more in number more than 2 you have plural whereas in indian languages and other for other indian languages and foreign languages you have, there also you have only singular and plural no question of dual ekavachana and bahuvachana so for that which is one you use ekavachana more than one you use bahuvachana but the peculiarity and uniqueness both underline both peculiarity peculiarity and uniqueness of sanskrit language is it is called what is known as dvivachana why only sanskrit has it why not other languages that is a very deep uh, issue which has to be dealt it dealt with at length i will not go into that but here he says here the question is raised how can a word that is used in singular number denote many things or many categories of the of a particular object or entity so you are telling makara denotes the individual soul it is samashti vada kaitam thank you it actually denotes all the type all types of individual souls namely bonded souls then liberated souls and eternally liberated souls baddha mukta and nitya so such when such a question is answered by mentioning the next sutra the 68 sutra which has only one word jat yeka vachanam so it is what is known as jat yeka vachana so i will give an example in english which is very easy for you to understand when i say man is a social animal there is a sentence 
So here man is a social animal means to whom does it refer to? Does it refer to Keshav Das Ji or does it refer to me or does it, does it refer to Govinda Chari or does it refer to Ram Shinvas? To whom does it refer to? <laughs> it refers to everybody. <laughs> so, what does it mean? Man is a social animal. This statement essentially means all humans are social animals. Isn't it? Or if I say the elephant has a trunk. If I say the elephant has a trunk. Or if I say the lion has a mane. Then do you question which elephant has a trunk? Is the question raised like that? No. Because the elephant has a trunk. Or if I say the elephant is an animal which has a trunk, it means all elephants have trunks. So this is a very, very simple example that is universally used. This concept of what is known as Jatye Kavachana is a universal concept, not limited to Sanskrit alone. <coughs> so here, that is what he says. So he has given a, an example that used to be referred to in those days. When a person <coughs> sees a, a, a when he sees a heap of paddy or heap of rice and he says this is rice. It means rice in this context is in singular. But a heap of rice means heap means how many grains are there in that? There are innumerable grains. <laughs> Nobody can count them individually. Suppose there is about 50 kilograms of rice that is <coughs> which is put on the floor. How many rice grains does it contain? How many grains of rice does it contain? If I ask the question, what is the answer? Nobody knows. <laughs> it might have several millions or hundreds of thousands of grains. But I say this is rice. That means I use singular. That means it denotes the all the grains of rice that are infested with riceness or that contain riceness in them. That is what is known as Jatye Kavachana. So I, if I say the elephant has a trunk, means all elephants have trunks. Or if I say the lion has a mane, all lions have manes. Similarly, many a times when the concept of Jatye Kavachana is used, even a word that is in singular number can denote many entities belonging to the same group. That is very important. Therefore, when I say Jivatma, it encompasses all the Jivatmas in this world. Just like when I say man is a human animal, all humans are, eh? a man is a social animal. It means all human beings are social. They live together in society. Only a person who has overcome all his desires and is established in deep communion with God, he will try to be away from people, other people. Even he, when he is not meditating, even he wants to be among people. So no animal in this world can remain apart from other fellow beings, especially of the same category. <laughs> so always a human wants another human for companionship. So that is why it is mentioned as man is a social animal. Or all animals are social animals. They want to have, so there is a beautiful statement in the Mahabhashya. 
So when the Vitishajati Padartha Antara Kopi Hetu. So the said uh, Patanjali, who has authored the Mahabhasha, he gives, gives a beautiful example. So when there is a stay, uh, cow pen, in that cow pen there are many animals, many types of animals. When there are sheep, there are goats, there are buffaloes, there are cows. So when they are let out to graze in the morning, all of them will go together. Goats, cows, buffaloes, sheep, etc. But when they actually spread out to graze, automatically all the cows will become one group. They will all graze together. All the sheep will graze together. All the goats will graze together. All the buffaloes will graze together as groups. And during the afternoons when they drink water and rest for a while, then also they will all separate into separate groups. So each animal wants to have a companion of its own variety, not some other variety. So these are all very beautiful things that are mentioned that we can see in nature. Anyway, that is not very relevant to the present context, but this Jatya Kavajana is very important because when I say <clears throat> man is a social animal, it means all human beings are so. Or when I say this is rice, it means it is, it contains a heap of car, car, grains, which are all called as rice only, but together they are not called as a single rice. So, Atma means that which consists of Atmatva or what you call soulness or soulhood or whatever you would like to call it. There is no exact equivalent in English, but we can, we have some near terms that come near the meaning. Immakarattal Jatye Kavachanam and the 70-69 Sutra. Ittal Atma Jnatavin Dehatil Yavarti Shodnittaiti. So, why is it being mentioned that it is Jatye Kavachanam? And why is it being mentioned that it is the, it consists of all the uh, Chetanas are types of individual souls, namely bonded, liberated, and eternally liberated, Baddha, Mukta, and Nitya, respectively. Then he says, then that is explained. Immakarattal Atma Virudeya Yavvakaram Shuddhu Hirade Yenna Rudichai Hira Yenna Varudichai Hira Rittal Yendu Todangi Adavade Anchavim Shaksharamai so there is a use word called Vyavritti. Because the word Vyavarti means, Vyavarti means that which is different from Itara Bheda Jnana Matara Itara Bheda Vyavarti. Jnana Vati Umairin Dullaim Makarattal Sheshatva Shremana Atma Jnana Shre Bhutana Navanindi Achetanamana Dehat Tirkatil Atma Vin Vyavarti Shodnitta Iti. So, <coughs> Generally, it is very important to know why a particular word is being used in, in a particular context. So, why should the word Makara be mentioned here in this context? And why should a word that denotes knowledge and also the possessor of knowledge, you may call it as consciousness also, so why does the why does a word that is 
denoting consciousness as well as the position, possessor of the consciousness being is being used here. So it is being, suppose I, I tell Rama is a tall person. Why am I using the word tall here? It is mentioned Visheshanam Vyavartakatva Svabhavaha Vyavartakatva Svabhavaha An adjective is always used to separate an entity from similar entities. Suppose I say this is a blue pen and I tell somebody in my house please bring that blue pen. What does it mean? Don't bring the red pen. That means I am actually separating the pen having the blue color from the pen that has other colors like red, green, yellow, etc. Similarly here, why is a word which is denoting consciousness being mentioned? It is being mentioned because ittal dehaptil vyavritti shurnittaiti The seat of consciousness, the Consciousness that exists in which entity? It is the Atma or the individual soul that possesses consciousness. Therefore, it is known as Jnata. That means a possessor of consciousness. Therefore, when you say the individual soul is a possessor of consciousness or it is the seat of consciousness, to put it in the English way, it essentially means that the body is not the soul. It is not the seat of consciousness. Therefore, here, the <clears throat> in this context, it is being mentioned that the jivatma is different from the body. And then he mentions ittaratma jnata vinne dehaptil vyavrti shuddhita itte this aspect has been explained in detail by me. That is what Pradaloka Acharya says. This has been explained by me in detail in the work called Tattva Shekhara. So I am not going to explain it once again in this context because it will be a repetition. But uh, Swami Manavala Mahamani knew the situation of people like us. So we don't have access to Tattva Shekhara Granta, though it has been published. And uh, we may not be inquisitive, inquisitive enough to go to uh, refer to that work and say what has been mentioned. So Swami Manavadu Mamani takes pity on us and he says what has been mentioned in Tattva Shekhara. So he says, Devo ham manushyo ham sthulo ham krisho ham yendri dehatilla ham buddhi vyavaharangal nadava nirka ahamartha bhutamana atma dehatil vyavartanin vyavartanin shuldo hirapadi tane tan yengane in narulitse hirar dehatil vyavarti tatrashe karatile shunnom so this is a very, very, very tricky, controversial, but very much essential issue. So when all of us use the word I or Aham, which we call as I consciousness, it generally refers to the body only. Because you say, I am fat, I am stout, I am obese, I am thin, I am a human being, I am a male, I am a female. In all these Usages. The word I refers to the body of the. This is for sure, there is no doubt about it because 
when I say I am thin or I am obese. The thinness refers to the thinness that exists in the body of a person. Or if I say I am obese, this obesity refers to whom? The obesity is with regard to the body only, not the soul. Because soul is neither obese nor or thin. So if I say I am a male, I am a female, the soul does not have any sex. Neither it is male nor female, nor it is a transgender. <laughs> Just like Nabandwar says with regard to the Supreme Lord, Adalan, Pendalan, Allah, Aliyumalan. So the Supreme Naivastri Napumane Shaha Nachaivayam Napum Sakrava. When it is being referred to the Supreme Lord, though we call him as the as the Parama Purusha, Purusha, Parama Purusha, etc. His gender is not akin to our gender. So he is neither male nor female nor transgender. Similarly, Jivatma, as it is, the Jivatma does not possess any gender. So, <clears throat> When you say, I am a male or I am a female, to what does this I refer to? It refers to this body only. But on the other hand, there are other usages as well, which says, my body or I know. So when you say my body, this is my body, then who is that I, which is part of that my? In those usages, the word I refers to the soul that is within the body. Because if you say my and the I that is part of the word my refers to the body only, then the meaning be, it will be, become be equal to body's body, which is an incongruous or invalid statement. So when I say my body, the I consciousness that is part of the word my. So my is the genitive case of the word stem nominal stem I. Mama, Mama Shariram. So in such use it is the word I refers to the Atma or individual soul which possesses this body. Then when you say I know in such a case also the I refers to the Atma or say Chetana or the soul, because that is the seat of knowledge or consciousness. Because the body cannot know. Body is not a, a Chetana, it's not a sentient entity. If the body itself were to be the soul, then there would not have been a difference between a dead body and living body. So we know that that is what Jaya Shastra says. The body cannot be a conscious entity because when a person dies, the body continues to exist, but it is not conscious. Conscious, it does not perform any function. Therefore, logically, we can establish the existence of a soul that is beyond the body. So that is why those who mentioned that the body itself is the soul are known as Dehatma Vadis. So you have several schools of thought like Dehatma Vada, Indriyatma Vada, Manatma Vada, Pranatma Vada, etc. Dehatma Vada is the school of thought which says the soul itself is the body. Then you have the school of thought which says the Indriyatma are the sense organs, the eye, ear, etc. That is the software part of the eye, ear, nose, tongue, and skin. So there is the statement or school of thought which says if the body is not the soul, then why, why the sense organs cannot be considered as the soul? Going beyond 
Why can't the mind itself be considered as a soul? Why do you accept the mind and soul as two different entities? So that is also refuted because it's not according to the fact or what is really existing, according to reality. So Vanatmavada is the mind itself is the soul, the school of thought that the mind itself can, can be considered as the soul. That is also refuted. Then there is a school of thought which says the Pranatmavada. That is the pranavayu or the vital layers that enable us to live and uh, live and which make the difference between the living and the dead. Because as far as the, as until the uchvasa and nishvasa, the inhalation and exhalation of air happens, a person is alive. Even though he may be unconscious or he may be sleeping, Inhalation and exhalation happen. The moment inhalation and exhalation stops, he is dead. The person is dead. The Atma no longer stays. So why not consider the prana itself as the Jivatma? That is also refuted. So Dehatma Vada, that is the school that the body itself is so. Indriyatma Vada is the school of thought, which says, the sense organs are the soul. Mana Atmavara, the school of thought, it says the mind is the soul. And the Prana Atmavara, the school of thought, which says the vital layers, which are known as Prana in Sanskrit, is the soul, is also refuted because it is not in accordance with the reality. And it is established that the Atma is beyond all these things. It is beyond the body, it is beyond the sense organs, it is beyond the mind, it is beyond the vital layer known as prana. And it's a unique entity. This is how it has been explained in Tattva Shekhar Granthabe Pridhalokacharya, which has been explained in brief by Manavad Mahuni here. And it is mentioned as an extension of the Putratnavada, as an extension of the Dehatnavada, extension of the school of thought that the body itself is the soul. Swami Vedanta Deshka mentions, you also have schools of thought called Putratnavada and Gehatnavada. That means some people consider their Sun as their soul. <laughs> Some people consider their house a physical entity as their soul. That is why we read in the newspapers. So, due to the earthquake, his house was fully damaged. So, as soon as the person heard that his house was damaged, he suffered a heart attack and he died. So, he thinks that his Atma or soul is the house itself. <laughs> so when the house was destroyed, he felt he had lost, he had lost his soul. That is why he, as soon as he heard that, he died. So those people are, we are all, we know we are all Dehatmavadis. Because we are not able to cognize the soul which is beyond the body. So that is why we say, we all are Dehatma Abhimanis. That means we consider our body itself to be the Atma because we have not realized the existence of an Atma which is separate from the body. But there are many people who are so much attached to worldly objects or things like their some people like their son or wife or husband because when Dronacharya, of course, Dronacharya was supposed to be a highly evolved person. But when he heard that his son was killed, he no longer wanted to leave. But it is mentioned that he gave up his life on his own, on his own accord, which is a great, great, great thing. But he was too much attached to his son. 
uh, living alive aside the story of dronacharya we know several we read in the papers once again several instances where when a person came to know that his son had died in an accident he also passed away immediately so where are the deshkases further schools of thought are which are partially true not totally true not totally untrue partially they are true in the sense that you have putra atmavada and geha atmavada etc which apply to certain classes of people but in reality the atma is beyond the beyond relation relatives like son wife husband etc it is beyond uh, the properties that he possesses it is beyond his body it is beyond his sense organs it is beyond his mind and also beyond the prana it is different from all these things that is what is mentioned by pulladoka acharya in a very succinct manner in the tattva shekara grantha and explained by manavala vami here as mentioned by me until now ृत्ति प्रवेशे करो वॉज एक्सप्लेन बै मी अंटिल नौ दणत्तुपूव रक्तुमापोले शेषमीन आत्मा आदरी अल्लाद्यम जीवाचार्य आंसर ट्रेडिशनल इंडियन फ्लवर फॉर because of its wonderful organic and organic smell which is also which also has therapeutic properties so a flower becomes very much desirable on account of on account of its wonderful smell or odor similarly a ratna or emerald or sapphire or a some other type of what do you call it mm. diamond why does it become very much desirable because of its shade so diamond has so many facets and the shades of light it produces beautiful wonderful so if a, a diamond doesn't become desirable on account of its own on its own account but on account of its beautiful shades of light that it when it is passed through you get it therefore it becomes very desirable similarly this atma is very desirable because of its sheshatva and not because of its gyatra जीवात्मा if assuming that is it cannot happen like that assuming that the atma is not shesha or not subservient to the supreme lord then it is to be totally given up 
அல்லாத போது உடியினால் குறைவிடும் என்கிறபடியே தியாஜ்யம் அது தோன்ன சேஷத்துவத்தை சொல்லி பின்னை ஆத்மாவை சொல்லுகிறது சோ ஹி கோட்ஸ் தி பாஷ்ரம் which i will explain in the next class so to conclude the meaning of this sutra is the atma or individual soul becomes very much desirable on account of its subservience to the supreme lord and not otherwise if there were a case an instance where the jivatma it's not possible at all assuming that there were a case or instance where the jivatma was not subservient to paramatma then definitely the jivatma would become undesirable it could not be a very desirable or respected object entity so just as we <coughs> admire and appreciate a flower on account of its wonderful therapeutic smell or odor just as we appreciate and desire a diamond on account of the many innumerable shades that emanate from it when exposed to light this jivatma also is desirable it becomes very close to us due to its subservience to the supreme lord if it were to happen that it was not subservient then the jivatma also would have been a object fit to be given up it would have been an entity fit to be given up therefore that subservience that relationship of subservience to the supreme god which exists in each and every jivatma makes it very much desirable it is desirable for the paramatma also because it is his own amsha because in bhagavad gita krishna says namayo amsho jeeva loke jeeva bhuta sana and even in the upanishad it says amsho nana vyapadesha அப்படின்னு <coughs> So with these words, I conclude today's lecture. I am a little bit sorry because of the external disturbances due to which we had to have an interruption of a few minutes. <clears throat> so any questions are welcome. Any feedback is welcome. So Swami, thank you. Uh, you were mentioning that the Jeevatmans, there are three types of Jeevatmans. There is the uh, Bada Jeeva. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes. So there's the Bada Jeeva, there's the Mukta Jeeva, and there's the Nitya Mukta or the Nitya Suri. These three types of Atmans. Yes. Jeeva, Jeeva Atmans. And they're all subservient to the Supreme Lord. So they all have the quality of Sheshatva. Yes. So my, my question is, uh, does it also mean, so since all Jeeva Atmans have the quality of Sheshatva, can we say also the reverse is true? that all entities that are that have the quality of sheshatva are jivatmans no that does not hold true because you have achit also which is sheshatva supreme lord so because achit achitvastu that is ancient ancient entities okay so but it uh, can't by the name prakriti they are also shesha so they are therefore all that is shesha is not jiva so the vice versa is not true. so insentient insentient entities are also considered sheshatva yes of course that is why two clauses are there to define the jivatma gyatratve sati sheshatvam jivatma hasmurupa so those that possess uh, so consciousness as well as subservience are known as jivatma if you say only sheshatvam then it there is uh, it actually has the <coughs> dosha or parasya fativya or parvesha because sheshatva exists in the achetana vastu also 
if you say gyatritva is the definition of jiva for them that pervades that pervades in paramatma so because paramatma also is possessor of consciousness that is why in the shastra is method of defining the jiva by have two classes that which possesses subservience as well as consciousness is called as jiva ajnatrutve sati sheshatvam jiva punah rakshanam that is what we say when we deal with this subject in a in the hardcore shastra week so um my 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 question was actually uh i'm trying to understand the 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 there are three tattvas there's ishvara tattva there's uh, there's chaitanya and achaitanya or yeah yeah Correct. so so uh mahalakshmi is does sheshatva in here in mahalakshmi and if so is mahalakshmi therefore considered part of jiva koti or ishvara koti <laughs> see i don't uh, want to be drawn into this controversy because you cannot how much ever we say unless we have the, these uh, issues can never never be resolved we of course i will not say because i, I am i belong to tenacharya sampradaya i will say she is a jeeva koti only and say the vadagadai sampradaya is totally wrong i will not say why why sir so also because unless a person has the what we call as sakshatkara <clears throat> you cannot resolve this issue so either way there are a few problems if you say jeeva koti then there are so many problems because if you say jeeva koti then you say periya piratya arkishesham how is it possible etc some questions to raise if you say ishvara koti then there are, are there two brahmans this question is there so there are certain unresolved questions that exist in both the schools of thought so uh, you should not mistake me by saying oh he says he is no uh, he belongs to dhanacharya sampradaya is telling there are certain unresolved questions i am now i am talking from an objective point of view not from a subjective point of view because certain problems exist in both the schools of thought so we should not highlight only one school of thought which says and say the other is wrong or something like that but say i said speaking from an objective point of view so even vedanta deshika says swameevahu kachidra pare tak tatpriyam lokanatham ृष्णी and when she was frowning he created bad people <laughs> then it leads to several other logical problems so you should not consider what is known as in sanskrit we call them as raso uktis rasa ukti means these are very uh, these are mentioned in a different in a very uh, what do you call it uh, so i mention when i am in a very good mood i will say something which is which may not be very logically true <clears throat> so these things should not be subjected to logic or i will give another example so it is mentioned that uh, kurataalva when he was about to pass when he was about to leave his material body he said i will go to paramapada and welcome ramanuja acharya there but when he leaves this body and go to paramapada will he remain as kurataalva <laughs> will he retain his identity as kurataalva or for that point when ramanuja acharya comes to paramapada will he retain his identity as ramanuja acharya no 
so he will leave all his names and forms etc but it is mentioned that kurat advan mentioned like this that means it should not be subjected to logical reasoning so assuming that i will go there i will suppose i want to know two people are there so one both of them have started from bangalore to bombay then one person will say i will go to bombay and i will welcome him there it is possible because it's in the physical world but this does not apply to the spiritual plane because in vaikuntha the even in vaikuntha if you have male female purata advan ramanuja acharya keshava das advan etc then what does it mean <laughs> so in parashara but the swami parashara better mentions like this it should not be confused with logical reasoning then how to reconcile the fact that is mentioned in the vedanta works that the happenings in the life of a person are based on his own karma punya and papa so it is when god is mahalakshmi was frowning he created her in this person therefore he is undergoing the kind of misery then that means she is partial to somebody and impartial to her. she is partial to somebody and actually over um uh, she favors over favorable to others it is not the case therefore you should not subject these things to pure logic because some things are not mentioned in a logical context or in a shastra context they are mentioned as what we call as swarasya to be enjoyed the rasa i don't know what is the exact translation of the word rasa so it is to be enjoyed by what is known as connoisseurs so a poetic language is different logical reasoning is different so in the poetic context these things are mentioned so suppose i say the um what is that the elephant came flying in the sky and it mentioned something to her or him is it possible practically or mythologically it may be possible <laughs> so in mahabharata you say so uh, uh, the arjuna went to heaven and he brought the airavata to kunti for her to perform puja how do you understand this so we have some imagination and we accept it but it is physically it is not possible or if i say dasharatha used to be called by the devas to help him in the devas or in the in the uh, what is that uh, conflict or war occurred between the devas and asuras the demons and uh, the uh, demigods dasharatha used to go and help him. how did he go where did he go when did it happen which if you say it is purely historical then uh, which era is it did it happen in the 2200 bc or 300 bc when did it happen how did the shastra go <laughs> so these are all mentioned in a different context in a different spirit with a different inner meaning these should not be consumed confused with logical uh, understanding so even the concept of shri etc so whether it is jeeva koti or ishwara koti it's a needless uh what is the difference which can never be resolved so we go by the words of our purva acharyas respect so whether it is tenacharya sampradaya or adhari sampradaya all of us respect god god is he is equal to god the supreme lord vishnu and worship <laughs> and be the meet sure but uh, uh we are studying mamukshapadi mamukshapadi is uh, is a is a book by pila lokachari with a commentary by manavala mamunigal naturally it is considered to be a tenacharya yes. book no, so i'm not so, i'm so, not telling the mataris of pradaya is incorrect it is it is uh, 
we we give optimum respect to it and we accept what is mentioned there but sir a certain things when you go to a higher level they cannot be resolved very easily therefore we we accept the views given in the work and go by that right so what i'm say, what i'm saying is that we can also study rahasya triya saram by vedanta deshika and we 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 will definitely see there are some small differences between these two works on diff, on on yes, some yes. issues so uh, uh, i don't want to argue about those small differences i just want to understand the differences and no same thing see same thing again you have dvaita and advaita shiva and vishnu same problem is there so until today whether the jivatma and paramatma is one or the same it has not been resolved it can never be resolved because there are some two entities that are beyond our cognition so even today advaitin say they are one and the same we are telling they are different then madhvasa the madhva school of says they are totally different we have a medium uh, uh, what uh, we have a via media way of saying things and we talk about the identicalness and difference of jivatma and paramatma advaitin say jivatma does not exist at all they will say our school is correct we will say our school is correct madhva sampradaya says our school is correct but from an objective point of view which is correct then it's a totally different story altogether from which from which perspective in what context all these coming to so uh, once again shiva and vishnu shiva shiva param and vishnu param is a eternally going on uh, discussion even for that matter whether god exists or not today you have atheists saying things has this been resolved <laughs> universally no so that is why uh, recently also said uh, atheists say uh, you people say god created humans we say humans created god so what is the answer it is, it is, it is not a question that is given. so i will take the your question at a higher level so there are so many higher level issues that are not to be resolved that is why you say ultimately you have the sakshat kala and then everything is easy when you go to the state of the all the mind or ramam jatari right okay these, i oh, this is not automatic if i have shat shat if i had shat shat kala then i wouldn't be asking any questions of course uh so but just to get back to my the original point that i was asking um it, it, there is there is no difference between the tenacharya sampradaya and the deshika sampradaya on the on the fact that mahalakshmi also has the quality of sheshatva to 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 shriman narayana yes, right yes yes because she okay. is the first disciple so she is the she is a sheshabhuta to her <laughs> yes good but okay. in a different context you say he is higher than the supreme lord in a different context so this should not be considered sure. confused it. Okay so that another question i had was we mentioned you mentioned the three different types of jivatmans right so uh, again some people are what is the category the the alwars are in which category are they are they nitchasuris or are they or are they muktas uh, and also the acharyas should we see our own acharya as being a mukta or a nitchasuri once again, once again uh, you have you have touched that on and <laughs> so according to the idavupatara irapadi namalwar was supposed to be a nitya samsari nitya samsari i pon driver i everything that means he was like a nitya samsari who is eternally bonded this is one school of thought one it is mentioned in one place in another mention place it is mentioned he is the incarnation of the supreme lord himself in another place it is mentioned he is an incarnation of vishakshena in another place it is mentioned he is the amsha or the incarnation all the acharyas all the advars are associated with one one aspect of the supreme lord they say he is the amsha of the sudarshana he is the amsha of panchajanya he is the amsha of gada he is the amsha of some sharanga etc once again there should not be confusion among these things 
So whether they are Nitya Samsaris or Samsaris. So when you talk about the Nirhetuka Kripa or the greatness of the grace of the Supreme Lord, these people are considered to be Samsaris. And they became evolved purely on account of the grace of the Supreme Lord. Which is beyond any cause, not due to any particular reason. So from that point of view, to say they were samsaris who were liberated purely by the unreasonable, is not the correct word, beyond reason, that cannot be ascribed to any reason. By the grace of the Lord, that cannot be ascribed to any reason. From that point of view, the Advars are considered as samsaris. But when you see the greatness, when you say samsari, then they should not be equated with people like me and others. Oh, he is also, they are also samsaris like us only, what is so great? No. When you see the greatness of the Advars, from that point of view, you say they are incarnations of the various samshas or aspects of the Supreme Lord. So, from which point of view you see it? If you want to say that it's a controversy, then that's an issue. But uh, this is how it has been resolved by our poor Acharyas. So, also, uh, a question came up that uh, some people in, uh, ten especially in Tenacharya Sampradaya, we talk about Ramanuja Sambandha. That we want to, we want to, uh, we want to take some ashrayanam from uh, an acharya who has Ramanuja sambanda. So we want to have sambanda with Ramanuja in some way, and that way that will help us to go to moksha. And some people they are they are making a, a distinction between Ramanuja acharya and other acharyas, in the sense that uh, they say one is a uh, udharika uh, uh, guru and and uh, others are upa, upakaraka, upakaraka acharyas. So, so that he is... No, a... no, it's not like that. See, there are two types of acharyas. Uttara, this is not in the context of Ramanja acharya and other acharyas. It's not like that. As of today, all the Shri Vaishnavas are having the Ramanja acharya sambandha because we all have Ramanja acharya as our acharya. So that is why you say Asmat Guru Samarambham Yeti Shekhara Madhyama or Akshmi Nara Samarambham Nathayamana Madhyama or so these three Acharyas, Ramanja Acharya are, are common to all the Shri Vaishnavas as of today. But the, the concept of Uttaraka Acharya and Dupakaraka Acharya has got nothing to do with this. So a person might have Samashayanam from one person and he may learn the Granthas, the four Granthas, that is Rasya, Rasya, Shibhasya, Gita Bhasya, Rasya and Bhagavatishya from another Acharya. Then, in that context, Uttaraka Acharya is the person who facilitates moksha for this Diva. And Upakaraka Acharya is who helps in a subsidiary manner. So, Upakaraka means in a subsidiary manner, he is an Acharya, that is, he actually cooperates with the Uttaraka Acharya. So it is in that context, it's not to do with Ramanja Acharya and others. <laughs> so it is in that context that because the person who gives the Samashrayanam or Panjasamskara may not be able to may not be able to teach all the works in the Kalakshepa system. Then another person may teach the person who teaches these works in the Kalakshepa method he is known as Upakaraka Acharya. The person who gives the Samashayanam is known as Uttaraka It is in that context that I think. So, thank you very much, Swami. So, uh, Govindachari had a question, a uh, more technical question about uh, Bhakta Bimbas. Uh, uh, um, the, some some uh, deity form of an Acharya or an Alwar uh, does the since uh, the Supreme Lord is uh, Vyapaka, he is everywhere. He is Vishnu, he is everywhere. He can be in all places, but the Jivatman can only be in one place at one time. So how can the Jivatman pervade the Bhakta Bimba? No, the, what, we have, what we have 
as of today is even Bhakta Bimba Pratishta is allowed. So Bhakta Bimba Pratishta is allowed and we consider that Tatma to be associated with that Bimba, though they are in Vaikuntha, because we consider them as Muktatmas. So Muktatmas can pervade some specific uh, locations, though they are in the though those Bimbas are the icons are in Bhuloka. So there is nothing wrong in that. But according to Tannachari Sampradaya, there is a convention. So underline the word convention that after Manavada Mamani, we don't worship others in the form of icons. So there is a convention that we will worship the iconic form of the Acharyas until Madhavana Mamani will be. But in Vadakalai uh, Sampradaya, in some places, they are having the icons of even the Swamigis who have passed away recently. <laughs> but in Tannachari Sampradaya, we don't generally advise them. And I have not seen any any new icon of a new person who lived very recently. <laughs> so can can we say that the Jivatman, who is the Acharya, uh, he may go to Vaikuntha, but he can through Gunavyapti, he can he can yes, provide yes, the, yes. The, he can he can he can continue to because he he has the um, he has jnana, of Satyaka, he, Satyakama and Satya Sankalpa. So he can continue to influence the Jivatma who is in this world. So that is not prohibited or ruled out. Yeah, his his quality of uh, of of jnana is is expanded unlimitedly. So he can also understand what is happening in his uh, yes, yes, form yes, in yes. the in the temple here. Yes, yes, he can he can bless his soul though he becomes liberated. So one question, why going that, uh, why do we have that convention? Because we consider that Manavana Mamani was the greatest of the Acharyas to have lived until now. That means greatest in the sense, after him, there can be none who can equal him. Therefore, we don't have the icons of further Acharyas after Manavana Mamani. <laughs> they might have been great, but we consider Madhavan Mamani as the greatest to have adorned our thing after uh, until a particular period. So that is why in Tenacharya Sampradaya we don't do that. Swami, in the Tenacharya Sampradaya, there's this Oran Vali, Oran Vali uh, Guru Prampara that that like a like a garland. Yes, yes. That, correct, uh, correct. Man Manavala Mamuni is the is the is the acharya of Lord Ranganathan. So the garland was complete. Yes. So, <laughs> so, so nobody else comes yes, in yes, there. Yes. <laughs> so the garland is complete. So we we attach ourselves to the uh, flowers in the garland and we get liberated. <laughs> so very nice question observation. I congratulate you. <laughs> Okay. Thank you very much, Swami. So if anybody else has any, any questions or comments at this time. Uh, Adi and Dasan, Namaskar. Huh? Yeah, uh, Swami, I, yeah, I just have one uh, question, Swami. You had mentioned... Yeah, camera, camera if possible. Yeah. If possible. Yeah, actually, I have a very poor internet connection. That is the reason I no, have... No problem, no problem. Please go ahead. Please go. So you had made a clear uh, distinction between uh, Samashti and Vyashti. And you basically alluded to the fact that, uh, you know, uh, the Parabrahman, Paramatman is more like the Samashti, the generalized, you know, the abstract universal whole, whereas we individual souls are more of the uh, Vyashti type uh, because we are like single uh, entities. You also mentioned how Lord Krishna had, you know, mentions it very clearly that each one of us is an Amsha in the Paramatman, in Perumal. Now, uh, this is one aspect that you discussed earlier. Subsequently, you also talked about the different schools of thought that exist. Uh, you know, Deham, uh, Pranam, 
uh, and uh, indriyam and all that which also means which can can it be interpreted that different people or different individuals or different souls also ascribe to these different schools of thoughts otherwise these different schools of thoughts would never have arisen number 1 yes yes surely 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 yeah so now if we are all an amsha of the lord each of the individual souls that means each of these contradictory thoughts are also amsha of the lord but you but we discuss and we say that paramatma uh, is the absolute universal whole so how does this contradiction how do you reconcile this correct, contradiction correct. that yeah. he himself is a collection of different contradictions yes yes so here what happens is a very good question you have raised so here what happens is you when you don't realize that you are jamsha of the lord it can result in certain consequences like you become a dehatma adi indriyatma adi manatma adi etc so based on your uh, what do you have in mind certain things occur in the in the course of uh, the journey of the jivatma as i would like to put it so until you don't realize that you are the amsha of the jiva of the supreme lord paramatma when you think the body itself is the atma when you think the manas is the atma indriya is the atma etc then you undergo several consequences in your in your lives not life <clears throat> so when you are ascribing to those schools or when you believe in those vadas or when you inherently <clears throat> feel that you the body itself is the soul then these things happen but when you realize that you are the, the amsha of the supreme lord then you get liberated so it's not it it is in a way it is little bit subjective because the nature of the atma and the the journey of the atma depends on your mental dispositions so that is why we say we have to understand from the works of our purvacharyas and then realize first we have to mentally understand and then by the grace of god you realize that the supreme we are subservient to paramatma so when you are not having such a mental disposition when you are having and you feel the body itself is the atma then you undergo bondage and all these things all these schools should come into play so those schools are real with regard to people who have those types of dispositions have i answered your question yes swami thank you swami namaskar swami if you are not convinced you can we can discuss next week also once again you can think no, no. about it and let me know sure thank you swami namaskar swami ajay dramam jetye shatatura jatrakshari kamastham prapadyante jantavo antamadrsha punyam bhore vikasaya papadvan takshayai cha shiman avirbhut bhumo ramam jidivakara tinikrita virincha vidinam kushavibhutayah आम आम जपराम भोज समाश्रेन शाह